Oh, yes. Uh, why shouldn't I? Any reason why not? Have you ever taken LSD? No. Um, I've thought about it. Um, I've talked with many people who have taken it. And I have uh, read Finnegan's Wake aloud uh, at a time when uh, takers of LSD said that is just like LSD. So I've begun to feel that it, LSD may just be the lazy man's form of Finnegan's Wake. You said that bad news was indispensable to newspapers. Is the same thing true for television? Um, well, it's like saying if TV is a cool medium, then you, you can't use it for hot jobs. Like the Vietnam War is a hot war, and it won't go on TV. Uh, it's the first uh, war ever, a hot shooting war ever shown on a, on a cool medium. The cool medium involves the whole audience so deeply, they find war unbearable. Show the same war on movie, on f press photography and so on, people won't feel too badly about it. But on TV, they really feel it. They're involved for the first time. And so LBJ is making a great big mistake in trying to have a hot war on a cool medium. What should Canada do to be taken more seriously in the world? When you say what should Canada do to be taken more seriously, I, I, I think we're uh, very lucky, uh, very lucky to be a backward country. Uh, at, a, at a time like this, the, uh, the less involved, the less hot, the less you are in the, in the midst of the big events, surely the better off you are. No, I think it's a great asset. Also, when you are out of the main swim, as it were, you have a much better opportunity of seeing what's going on. Canadians have a tremendous opportunity to observe what's really happening in the world. I think Canada has the opportunity of taking the entire world as show business rather than as a serious and uh, dre dreadful happening. You know, why, not? why shouldn't Canadians accept the world as a happening and as show business? What do you think Marshall uh, McLuhan ought to do if he wants to be taken more seriously in the world today? Marshall McLuhan is taken far too seriously. I certainly wouldn't do anything to increase that. Marshall McLuhan, you say TV has turned the world into a global village. Am I right? Will it turn us all into global village idiots? <laughs> Again, uh, not, uh, there are worse fates. Um, an idiot means a very private person. That's a Greek word, meaning a very private person. I'm losing my idiot status steadily. I'm becoming less and less private. I'd much rather be an idiot. <laughs> The book, in this picture, uh, the uh, assumption was made that the book was the source and cause of all idiotism, all individuality, and that the new media will turn us all into collective automata robots. This is a rather simple-minded idea. I mean, Truffaut uh, and Brad Bradbury together had cooked up something that's not very convincing. They are, they are certainly true that the book has had an enormous amount to do with creating individuality. And the more people become individuals, the more they become competitive. And the more they compete, the more they become alike. It's true that uh, competition has, and uh, repeatability has tended to create a great sameness. And uh, you can see that uh, cool media don't always have that effect. There may be more individuality coming out of cool media. You've been quoted as saying that you don't necessarily agree with everything that you say. I have no point of view, uh, as for example, now. See, I, I, I couldn't possibly have a point of view. I'm just moving around and picking up information from many directions. No, uh, a point of view means a static fixed position, and you can't have a static fixed position in the electric age. It's impossible to have a point of view in the electric age and have any meaning at all. You've got to be everywhere at once, whether you like it or not, you have to be participating in everything going on at the same time, and that is not a point of view. Would it really matter if someone burned all the books in the world? Well, I should think so. It would make a, quite a difference. But um, the um, possibility of recreating libraries has now become fantastically real. For example, all the books in the world can be put on a single desktop, 20 million. 
20 million books can now be put open every page on single desktop by microfilm. Um, the, uh, the sort of things that are happening make that, that picture, that truthful picture, look rather obsolete. Uh, they still think of books as made uh, as bound uh, paper objects, but in the new microfilm age, microcard age and so on, the book is taking on a totally new meaning. In the age of Xerox, the book takes on a totally new meaning. It becomes an information service. It ceases to be a package. The book is no longer a package. It's information service. Why do you say Canada is a backward country? Oh, I'm using that term whimsically, meaning we are born in the 19th century, we're of 19th century origin, and we stayed there. People like the Americans who've decided to try it out in the 20th century have done such a bad job, we don't feel any temptation to follow them. <laughs> but, notice, notice for example, in British Columbia, they never had a 19th century. <laughs> but this is also true in California. They, they leapfrogged out of the 18th century into the 20th, and this has great advantages. Canada, by simply hanging on to the 19th century, may be able to leapfrog out of the 20th century into the 21st century without ever having bothered with the 20th. And this, I think, might be a huge advantage. If we can only hold...